everyone, welcome to Quirky Cooking Chats. We are going to have a bit of fun today. We're going to be visiting Wal Foster of Natural Ice Cream Australia, my favorite ice cream chef. <laughs> so if you have my cookbook, Simple Healing Food, you may have seen a recipe in here, this recipe right here um, for Wal's Cultured Ice Cream with Roasted Apricots. And today we're going to learn a bit about the story behind the ice cream. And I really encourage you to try this recipe because it's amazing. This video was taken a couple of weeks ago when we were on a quirky team trip down to Brunswick Heads in the Gold Coast. Um, and we had book signings and a few events down there to attend. So we popped by and visited Wall in his lovely blue ice cream van in Brunswick Heads and had a book signing there. So have a listen and join in the fun. And if you're ever in Brunswick Heads, I highly recommend going and getting a cultured ice cream from Wal Foster of Natural Ice Cream Australia. And here's Wal to tell you his story. Well, thanks so much for having us here today. Wal's gonna tell us a bit about why he does what he does and hopefully a little bit about how, but no trade secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Jay, so good to have you here. Thank you. Um, my name is Wal Foster. This is Natural Ice Cream Australia, or NIA. Uh, started this little project about two and a half years ago with my best mate, my oldest mate, Rio Greaves. Um, I had an idea to start a food truck business. Um, at the time I was looking after my mum. I was a full-time carer for her. She was not well, she had lung cancer. Um, and I was trying to develop an idea where I could look after her and still have time for myself so I wouldn't be working uh, the 60 plus hours mm. I've worked in the past as a chef. Um, and you had a restaurant in Sweden but you came back yeah. to look after your mum? lived in Sweden for six and a half years, had a yep. restaurant there, a humble little restaurant called Drengen which means farm hands. And, um, Love it. Yeah, I'm really proud of that, it was a great restaurant. Um, I only, I would have had it for the rest of my life but it really it was too dark. <laughs> it was so dark <laughs> and cold. Cold. The cold was okay. <laughs> okay. I loved snowboarding and okay. the darkness was. It just got me in the end, and I wanted to come back to Australia. Uh, to sunny Mullumbimby, yeah. Byron. Um, what is this area? Sorry, Brunswick Head. Sorry, I was trying to remember. <laughs> so yeah, um, my best mate Rio. He had the idea to um, come in with me and support me in that step into a food truck. The original idea was going to be ice cream, coffee, juice, food, everything. Mm -hmm. and he sort of talked me down into refining it into ice cream. Um, so, yeah, I'm really glad he did because otherwise I would have been doing the 80 hour weeks that I used to as a chef. Um, now, as we developed the idea for the business, it was more about a lifestyle yeah. um, to have a set amount of hours to produce a product that we're proud of and we can stand up and um, support. And I feel like we've done that. I've Definitely have. <laughs> Haven't you been um, nominated for an award yeah, or two? <laughs> nomination for an award, um, which is very exciting. And Do you want to say which one it is or not? I'm not allowed to. <laughs> ah, good thing I didn't mention it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't work more than 40 hours a week now. Um, yeah. Even at my restaurant, I was working 60 hours a week, just yeah. on four nights being open. And wow. really it takes its toll on you. I've mm. been a chef for 19 years and a big part of what I'm doing now is having a work-life balance, surfing, friends, and producing something that I love, staying creative, passionate, and it feels good. It's the best job I've ever had. I love this job. Um, Brunswick Heads is a Good place to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's a minute to the beach. Yeah. Um, surrounded by incredible producers which make my life so easy so inspiring. I can't believe the produce you put into your ice cream it's so yeah. like so many things that most people have never tasted right totally most of the things I've never tasted okay um, that was one thing that really pushed me back from the Swedish restaurant today and was seeing the Australian food um, the indigenous food scene really yeah. booming uh, friends like Ali Waddle at Harvest were and Peter Hardwick one of Australia's best foragers was starting this little Australian food scene at Harvest Restaurant and I was watching it from Sweden just in awe 
this is where I grew up and I had no idea about what a Davidson plum was or uh. finger lime or, <laughs> uh, so it was really incredible to come back and actually got a job with Al and working with Peter foraging it really taught me what a lot what I know about um, indigenous food uh. um, and yeah it's been a bit of a journey between um, looking after my mum um, caring for her really trying to cook her the most nutrient dense food possible I did a bunch of gut health courses and ah. um, really discovered the microbiome um, probiotic and prebiotic food creating optimal health for mm -hmm. um, the best immune system you can possibly have and opened my eyes um, that I've really been cooking with so much sugar my whole my whole career French based foods that mm. really sort of giving people diabetes in a funny way <laughs> um, and now it feels like I can produce something to my taste which yeah. is I really don't have a sweet tooth so mm. I produce my ice cream with a little extra salt and much less sweet sweetener which uh. really brings out the flavour so yep. that's a little trade secret there. I do the same I add salt to nearly everything it just makes it Boom, like it gives it that layer of flavor that's missing with so many foods. Yeah, and our bodies need a certain amount of salt, yeah. so as long as you don't overdo it, yep. um, and you've got a balanced diet, it's mm. really important. So, yeah, finding a balance with that and putting my taste on the plate, two and a half years later, it's still being well received. So, it's been two and a half years now. Almost two and a half years. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Um, so what kind of ingredients are in your ice creams that you don't mind sharing? <laughs> yeah, so I use milk and cream yep. um, and I use organic eggs, certified organic. Mm -hmm. I really try and use everything local yep. that I can. Um, one of the ones that I'm going to serve with your beautiful buttered apples today is a cultured lemon myrtle. Buttered apples. Um, because it's a little chilly out there, we're going to serve them warm and the ice cream will go on cold obviously <laughs> <laughs> the ice cream won't be warm I really like uh, eating things that are hot and cold yes. so um, the ice cream itself if you can imagine a custard uh, I take lemon myrtle leaves from two streets away <laughs> infuse it into milk make a custard with the eggs I culture the whole thing with five strains of probiotics Wow! so the whole thing is like a yogurt only the eggs rich in it mm. um, and then I just emulsify raw local honey into it yep so there's no sugar and um, that's one of my favorites. That was the original ice cream I made, the first one I ever made, to kick off the idea for the whole business. And, uh, I don't think I've tried that one. No. I look forward to that. That's the OG. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Um, and also, it's a real privilege to have you here because it was a year ago you asked me to be a part of your book. Yes. And um, the food that you cook in the book is all the food that I was producing for my mum, that sort of style yeah. of food, bone broths, meat stocks, um, really beautiful nutrient dense food that I love to eat as a chef these days. Um, and our collaboration has come to this beautiful Russian custard meats, um, kefir, <laughs> today it's with a, in an ice cream lollipop dipped in organic dark chocolate. With wattle seed I believe. With wattle seed, wattle's just coming to season. Love it. So it's just really nice to have a look around when you're thinking of flavours. There's so much around us that you can flavour food with. Mm. And that's the stuff we should be eating. Things that give you a sense of time and place. You look yeah. around, that's the, the season, the peak of the nutrition, peak of the flavour. Yep. It's, yeah. it's much easier to work like that too. I believe this tree, this famous tree out here, if I can, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Probably paper bark tree here is a part of Wall's creations. Yeah, well, like I was saying, looking around, we've got so much around us. Um, at the front of the house is this beautiful, very old, ancient uh, paper bark tree, a Malaluca. And uh, it's like a mascot of Brunswick Heads. As you drive into the street, it's just huge. And um, I had the idea to smoke an ice cream. So I did a couple of different ways, but I found that smoking the milk for the custard at the base of the ice cream was the best way. It takes about four or five hours of coals. Wow. Um, you get this beautiful, rich, smoky, almost like a smoky tiramisu because I put um, 
organic maple that I've infused with coffee from oh, Bean so and Mom Bimbi. Has a glaze over the top, so it's like a yeah. smoky, smoky tiramisu. It's packed full of inulin, which is um, a really good resistant starch that feeds the good bacteria in your large intestine. Um, prebiotic, and that comes from certified organic Jerusalem artichokes, uh -huh. and it just gives it a nice structure to the ice cream. It gives it a really creamy structure, which is just works hand in hand. So you use the paper bark to make the smoke for the smoking the ice cream, right? Yeah. I remember the first time you tried to explain it to me, I was so confused. I'm like, how do you smoke ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, smoke the milk, right, that makes sense. Yeah. And then we tasted it and we, our minds were blown. <laughs> the other one that I gotta say I absolutely adore is the rice pudding. Um, how does that work again? Yeah, I usually, um, again, that's just like, everything that I'm doing is a product of my whole career. So I've saved recipes from 19 years and that one comes from a pastry chef I worked with, Aaron, at a restaurant called Rocket, Aaron Eady, and he taught me a lot of good pastry tricks when I've, I've never been a pastry chef. But that was one thing that stood out to me just because I love rice pudding and Yum. sushi rice just holds its shape, mm -hmm. its texture, and again, hot and cold is really nice. So. When it's raining or it's cold, which has been quite a often lot. the last two summers, oh. um, I run a rice pudding. So ice cream on top of the rice pudding. I believe you got the first one that I ever did. Oh, it was so good. I always tell people about it. So what kind of ice cream was it? It was a jackfruit ice cream. Oh. And it had a jackfruit seed praline on the top with That's some right. kefir lime. And it's, it's funny, I remember all every single batch that you've ever done. done. I remember them all. <laughs> You've had da Davidson Plum syrups. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us some more of the like indigenous ingredients and. Oh, it's incredible. Just in the myrtle family, like lemon myrtle, cinnamon myrtle, aniseed myrtle, rose myrtle, pineapple myrtle. What? It's insane. The list goes on and on and on. Endless um, supply of flavors. Yeah, just just so incredible. I work with Rebecca from Playing with Fire Native Foods. She's one of the leading um, indigenous foods knowledge in Australia she's incredible oh. and she's been really generous with her knowledge and she is with everyone um, and she constantly shows me still two and a half years later new exciting flavors that I've just had no idea about so it's constantly um, inspiring to work with indigenous local foods and the pepper the mountain pepper yes yeah so from Tassie um, mountain pepper very strong it's almost like Wasabi, it will punch you in the face if you have too much. <laughs> um, but it's used right, it tastes like clove, just really warming, um, but purple in colour, like it's oh. really gorgeous. Um, and that's an indigenous berry, I guess. Yeah, yeah, pepper berry. Mm -hmm. um, the leaves you can use as well, oh. really spicy. Same thing, you can just infuse it into things. Mm. There's a local one, Dorigo pepper, yep. which is obviously from Dorigo and around that area. Uh, not as fruity, it's very, very much pepper. Yeah. Um, and obviously, for culinary savory purposes, really, Perfect, really yeah. fun. But the fruity one is the one you use in the ice cream. Yeah. And I like so to use that. that was in the recipe that we collaborated on. You put that in there. And yeah. So this time you've used the wattle seed instead. Yeah, just because right? I've been yeah. driving around and the wattle's just pumping at the moment. So. Yeah. How do you collect wattle seed to use? Um, Rebecca actually taught me recently. I didn't do it myself. Okay. I bought that from Rebecca. Okay. So she actually buys the raw wattle seed from an indigenous um, foraging community <laughs> and roasts it herself. Right. Yeah. And it's got a bit of a, has it got a bit of a coffee flavor? Is that um, the one that they it use does. sometimes? Yeah, it's got like a very earthy, coffee, chocolatey, nutty. It's really quite versatile. But again, overpowering if you use too much, it's yeah. pretty wild. Yeah. Well, we are looking forward to trying that. So when Wall first, I should turn this around, hang on. So when Wall first, uh, when we first started tasting all these amazing ice creams, I was like, I really need one of these cultured ice creams in the cookbook. And um, I said to Wall, Can, do you want to share just a really simple one that anyone could make at home? So he just like gave me this scrawled note of, you know, make sabé on and then fold through kefir cream and da da da. And he's like, there you go. That's the simplest one. I'm like, eh. 
<laughs> I think most of us struggle with um, basic chefy things like making sabay on. So that's why we decided to do the Russian custard because most of you guys already make that and love it. And it's very similar. What, what's the difference? I, I suppose sabayon's lighter. Um, very okay. similar. The sabayon is just eggs and sugar usually. Yeah. That one was eggs and honey. Yeah. And whole eggs. Um, whereas That's the it. It's whole eggs, isn't it? Russian custard was yolks, yolks and and butter. Yes. And honey. So it was um yeah it was a little bit different but I just found that a bit easier so hopefully if you guys haven't tried it yet and you've got the simple healing food cookbook go and have a look um at that recipe and it's on the page with a few different ice creams. And um, you made that one with the roasted apricots for the Ro book. Yeah, roasted apricots yeah. with the honeycomb sauce, I think. That's what it was. Mm. Um, so that's something that you could do when the stone fruit's in season. Yeah. Yeah. But cool. anything around you, anything you can yeah. see that's, that's at the peak of the season or um, an aromatic, like a, a say, wattle seed or yeah. the pepperberry or um, anything. The roasted fruit is one of my favorite ways to to cook up all sorts of fruits mm. have you got any other tips for um fruits the way that you prepare fruits to go with the ice creams like if you if it's not roasted fruit season i'm yeah, oh, sorry really. stone fruit season um, absolutely um my whole chef i've been trying to over my whole chef in korea i've been trying to <laughs> we're as bad as each other <laughs> yeah. i've been trying to overdo things over complicate yes. things suddenly i'm really trying to refine my flavors down and yep. nail them mm -hmm. so say if it's a mango ice cream i just like to use raw mango yeah uh, 50 percent mango at least mm. in my ice cream um i did one with the cultured ice cream base just honey and 50 percent mango no idea how it'd come out and honestly i think it's one of the best ice creams i've ever oh. produced the flavour must be so good. Yeah, just using real ingredients. It's... But I guess a lot of um, production of food, they reduce the amount of fruit because it's cheaper. Is that... Yeah, and and, sh and raise the levels of sugar. sugar. And yeah. that carries the flavour. Um, so nice to be able to get that freshness from so much more fruit. Yeah, and nothing should be sweeter than a piece of fruit. Exactly. So it's really easy to work like that. Yeah. Um, and there's so much interesting farms around here, like um, Pocony Exotics, Boonlark Farms, etc., etc., where um, John and Lindell for 20 years have been producing this exotic fruit in four acres that's under a fruit fly mesh, so they don't have to spray anything. Oh, that's it's, cool. There's like varieties of jackfruit, there's different varieties of um, dragon fruit, like I've never tried before, that are exploding with flavour. Oh, why aren't we seeing this everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what colours are the dragon fruit? Um, the big pearl dragon fruits, massive big white ones. Wow. Really blood red, red ones. Yeah. So many varieties of guava, like um, mm. strawberry guava, uh, Mexican cream guava, um, pink supreme, wow. just absolutely popping with flavour. and just make some most gorgeous ice cream using real ingredients. It's, yeah. The job's done. I'm yeah. Just very lucky around here. Yeah. Okay, so um, guys, we're expecting to see some um, experimenting with this base ice cream. <laughs> 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 Show us what you're making. Can, can we just have a look at the um, lollipop ice creams? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so this is what Wall's made today for, so I'm here with Wall because we're gonna do a book signing here this afternoon. Woo, look at that. Oh wait, I've gotta focus on it. Um, so inside there is the Russian custard. I can't get it to focus well, sorry guys. Um, is the Russian custard and kefir cream ice cream with wattle seed and dark chocolate coating. That looks so good. I'm gonna take a photo of that. There we go. <laughs> um, do you want to? I suppose you don't want to. We'll I see some. Or you I can. can it okay. Halfway. All right. There you go. He, so it's designed. You know, to someone's got to do it. It's a hard job, but you're someone's. It's designed to, do it. to eat in one bite. Okay. Um, because the Russian custard and the kefir works like a parfait. It's a nice soft ice cream, but the chocolate is organic and it come. It's tempered, so it's ah, got a real crack to it. Yes. So designed to eat in one bite. Because otherwise it, it cracks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. And it's so creamy. Mm. And you know, with this one, it's not like a churned ice cream. So anybody can make it at home, even if you don't have fancy equipment. That looks so good. Oops. <laughs> Can't really get it to focus in. 
Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> So this Natural Ice Cream Australia is the only place that you can get cultured ice cream that I know of in the world. Woo! Unique to my little trailer. I'm um, doing events, doing private functions, um, but I'd love to host it. Come and try it sometime. Brunswick yes. Heads. Come visit Brunswick Heads. It is worth the visit for this <laughs> ice cream. I'm serious. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Okay, well, we're going to have people turning up any minute. I think it's the team's here setting up and um this is going to be exciting look forward to it thanks well thank you so much <laughs> buttered apples so what's that going to go with this is with the uh, cultured lemon myrtle and honey oh yum so where's all this ice cream ice cream i'll just peek in here there's a little bit in here oh yeah what's that one that's the coconut yogurt the vegan option i know where the lollipops are <laughs> this is my ayabaya from my <laughs> restaurant in Sweden. It means naughty, naughty in Swedish. Uh, so it's Joe and my collaboration. It's Joe's Russian custard with wattle seed. Because as you'd see, the wattles are all coming into season. So it's just folded with roasted wattle seed. There's no sugar, just honey, organic butter, and kefir cultured cream folded in the last second. Organic dark chocolate. Okay. Thank oven. you. Designed to eat in one bite, it will fall apart. <laughs> they look happy. <laughs> it's very silent here, and that is a good sign. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> yep, so good. Amazing. <laughs> Guys, you got to come. We're having ice cream. Look at this. Look at the menu. Ice cream, lollipop. This is kefir, wattle, honey, chocolate, egg yolks, cultured lemon myrtle ice cream with warm buttered apples, smoky paper bark maple coffee from this smoked paper bark, and vegan coconut yogurt, citrus, debo plum, finger lime, made by the genius Woo! Walt Foster. <laughs> and you can also come and get your big signed and check out my new spice mixes. All right, we're ready. I can't decide, so I'll probably have both. <laughs> no, not right now. I'll have the lemon myrtle and the buttered apples, I think. Thank you. So this is exactly following your recipe. Okay. These organic apples from Bruns Health Food Store. Pink ladies. Yeah. Just cook down. Only I haven't put any cinnamon, because I didn't okay. want to take it away from yeah. the lemon myrtle. Yes. So the cultured lemon myrtle and honey. And what's on hers? Oh, that's the smoky one. Oh, the smoky with the buttered apples. Mm. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. Yeah, it is very different. Yeah, you got to do that nice. I just, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, yeah. And he graciously sent me one of these. Oh, okay. So then I was like, I'd like to be 